Hi guys, Dr. Gillard again. Let's talk about the fibula, the little fibula here. We just did the tibia, now we're going to do the fibula. Let's bring the, our friend the tibia back in here, just so we can see how these kind of connect. And I guess the important point, well they're both important, but um, down here so we would have the lateral malleolus, there's the medial malleolus of the tibia, lateral malleolus of the fibula. So this is the distal end here. So let's let's get a little bit deeper. Let's actually start, now that you can see it, let's zoom in at the proximal end and talk about that. So this is an anterior view. This is actually quite difficult to teach because it's got some tough borders to see. Uh, but this is the proximal portion of the fibula. It articulates not with the femur, it does not really form the knee joint, but it articulates with the, the condyle of the tibia. Uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, if I slide down a little bit, so how do I know I'm, this is an A to P view. If Now these are anomalous, so it doesn't always, but most of the time it works like this. If I slide down you can start to see a nice little, I call it a railroad track. It's an elevated structure and I don't know how else to describe it. It's a railroad track though, but it's got two sharp edges here and a sharp edge here. Okay, and those are have names of course and we can keep following it down. It gets wider and wider. Pretty soon it kind of fades away as we get down here lower. Uh, you can see the lateral malleolus is out on that side. So this is a left fibula and I'll tell you at the end of the video I'll tell you how to tell the difference and that will be on the test I'll throw one of these out you'll have to tell me is this a right or a left so I guess while we're here let's talk about this so this border even though it's laterally facing is actually called the anterior border anterior border border means an edge so anterior border of the fibula. And this would be the interosseous border. So that matches up with the interosseous border of the tibia. Okay. Now it's a little controversial about the space in the middle. Uh, Netter actually doesn't call it anything. And I don't believe that is correct. Because this is the anterior border and this is medial to the anterior border and we're talking a little bit here let's even zoom in I'll just uh, but because this is medial this is the medial surface uh, in standering which is the Bible that's the what is it 2,000 pages 1,500 pages the Gray's Anatomy uh, it actually mentions in there that the other authors uh, are all over the place in naming this uh, it actually uh, names it the what was it the medial anterior border. I can't remember. Don't quote me on that. But let's go with what Drake, that's your book and that's what medical students use and everybody uses Drake, the Gray's Anatomy by Drake. Uh, they do call this the medial surface. So that's what we're going to go with, the medial surface here. So if this is medial, then this surface would be the lateral surface. Okay, so lateral surface is here lateral surface all the way down it kind of peters out down here at the bottom and then you get to the lateral malleolus which is right here okay hope you got that down some of those uh, you will be tested on these borders here and let's go up to the most proximal part so we have three parts here we have the neck of the fibula is the skinny part below the head. This big bulgy part is the head. And then if I tip way up, you can see right here is the apex. That's the apex. So let's look at that from the lateral view. Let's go maybe this direction here long ways. You can see this better. Okay, so this is a lateral view. Now you can see the neck, you can see the head, 
and you can see sticking up is the apex. Got it? Let's turn it to the anterior to the camera. So that should be about an anterior view. And now again, you can see that medial surface, the railroad tie. So this would be the interosseous border. And on this side, even though it's lateral, it's called the anterior border. Right there. If we flip it a little more, this is the lateral surface. So that works out okay. Okay, do you have it? Do you got it? All right. So what's the surface then? So if this was the interosseous border, so now we've slipped into the posterior surface. There's actually a, uh, they don't call it the posterior, this part right here. Uh, it's not called the posterior border. It slips my mind. I'll put it in the video though. Uh, but it's not the, but even though it is, it's pretty sharp here. Uh, but it's still the lateral surface goes and encapsulates this or this part here is lateral surface. Okay. Uh, Palmer students, you don't have to worry about that. That's too deep. Uh, all right. So one more thing I wanted to show you here. Let's look at an S to I view here of this. So let's get ourselves orientated. This is a S to I view. This is the medial surface right here we're looking at. Medial surface. This is the head. This is the styloid process again. If I tip it down, you can see the styloid poking out. And right on the styloid, between the head and the styloid, we have a nice facet here. See it? So that's half of, the, half of a facet that forms the superior tibial fibular joint, which is a true diarthroidal joint. Um, I couldn't actually find a name in any of our books for this other than that it is the facet uh, for the superior tib-fib joint. So there, there is one, let's, you know, I think I forgot to show you that on uh, the tibia. So let's take a look at that now. There is one that Standring actually calls the fibular facet. Uh, and it's not very impressive, but it would be right up here in the lateral portion. I don't know if you can see that or not, but... Strandery calls that the fibula, fibular facet of the tibia. How do they go together? Let's zoom out here a sec. Okay, this is medial over here. This is lateral. So they fit together just like this. Just like that. And you can see that... Well, I don't know if you can see this. this is asking a lot here, but the, the articulation between those facets is right here. Bottom line is we are on the, this would be the lateral surface on the lateral condyle. More specifically, the posterior lateral condyle is where that fibular facet of the tibia is uh, for that superior tibial fibular articulation. So that's pretty hard to do to show you guys here. You're going to have to pick up the bone and look at that yourself. But we can certainly see it. Now the facet is quite well developed um, right there. I'm sure you can see that quite well. I can even see that through my viewfinder. So, Okay, so let's go down. We're almost done. Let's travel down. Now, I have, now we're back to the anterior view. Okay, let's travel down. There's the railroad track. Travel down the railroad track, it gets fatter and fatter and fatter, and finally peters out. But now we've reached the lateral malleolus. Lateral malleolus, just like the medial malleolus of the tibia, the lateral malleolus of the fibula is quite smooth. Let's actually zoom in on that. Okay, quite smooth. So the lateral surface is, there's really nothing. Uh, that it, that we need to know, other than that's the lateral surface of the lateral malleolus. Now, if we flip it medially, there's some keyed structures. You have to know this to to know which way the which fibulus 
this is, you have to know these structures. So we have a nice articular facet right here. Okay, so that's the articular facet of the lateral malleolus of the fibula. Okay, can you see it? It's very smooth right there. So here's the key. So if we see this, we always know we are looking medially. This is always laterally. So this goes on the inside of the leg if we're trying to figure out if this is left and right. The key to telling which one, though, you have to know what this is. There's a big cave right here. Can you see that? That's called the malleolar fossa. Malleolar fossa. And for Palmer students, malleolar fossa of the radius. Right? Wrong. Malleolar fossa of the fibula. I wanted to see if you were awake there. Malleolar fossa of the fibula. But uh, Drake and Netter, they all just call it the malleolar fossa because there is, it's a given that it's, the lateral, uh, it's, it's on the lateral malleolus. It's on the fibula because the tibia does not have one. So if you know this is posterior, you know this is anterior, then you absolutely know this is the left fibula. Okay, you got it? All right, one more time. I can hear some of you or see you scratching your heads. Okay, let's do it again. So, first thing you have to do is find the lateral, uh, find the distal end of the fibula. And that's pretty easy because it's kind of pointy like. It's not, uh, it's, it's more drawn out. Remember, the head of the fibula is more bulbous. So, and then you can also see that facet there. If, uh, if the specimen happens to have one. Some of them are degenerated away, but we would try to test you on one that has a nice facet. So that's no question. This is the proximal end. So this has got to be the distal end. All right. Then it's easy to find the lateral portion. So this goes outside of the leg. But we still don't know, is, does it go outside on the right or outside on the left? So to figure that out, you look at this facet right here. So now you can see the facet. The facet is always anterior, and behind it is always this nice size hole right here, which is the malleolar fossa. This is posterior, so it would have to go like this. Um, this would anterior, posterior. This would have to be the left fibula. Uh, that's about all I can do for that. You just have to pick that up and go look at it in the lab and make sure you can identify every single fibula there. Uh, what, did this, what is this? A, articulate with, that's the talus. What does this do? It's a site for ligament. There's two ligaments that attach in here. We won't start the ligament story now, but it's a site for ligamentous attachment. All right, I think that should wrap it up. And I'm thinking here, yep, I think we got it done. So good luck on your midterm. And we'll see you in the next video.